June 5th, 2017. Uh, I want to talk about soil today. Um, there are so many things to say about soil and so much to cover, but I'm just going to try and cover some general key concepts today um, for uh, gardeners and growers who uh, don't know all that much about soil. Uh, I want to try and educate you a little bit more. Uh, first, let me say um, that uh, this is sweet corn coming up here. Uh, it was planted, I believe, on the 23rd or 24th of May. Um, it germed. It's up. You can see it's doing well. Um, but uh, I tilled this strip so that I could easily plant the seed into the soil. Um, and this will be the next planting over here. It's not planted yet. I'll probably plant that today or tomorrow. Um, I just want to say tilling is probably one of the most, well not probably, it is one of the most destructive farming practices you can use. Um, because while it does wipe out the weeds initially, temporarily, and loosen the soil initially, temporarily, so that you can put seeds in, ultimately it actually gives the weeds a little bit more advantage over time because you're disturbing the bacteria and the fungal processes in the soil. And, uh, and so you're disturbing the biological profile in the soil and you're actually causing damage. Um, as Dan Kittredge from Bionutrient Food Association likes to say, if you want to commit genocide in the billions, go out and till some soil and you're killing billions of bacteria and fungi in a very short period of time. That said, sometimes it's a necessary process to establish a crop. Uh, these plots here both will be planted not just with the corn but they will be planted with uh, some cover crop species some nitrogen fixers a bunch of different variety and uh, basically it, they'll be planted either with variety that covers this soil thoroughly with leaves because they're growing and blocks out weeds or it will be mulched or a combination of both it probably will run a combination of both um, just due to lack of seed and, and a few other factors. Anyway, um, so that's the basic on tilling information. Um, I want to take you down and talk about how soil should actually be cared for now. And you'll notice when you look around in, na in nature, what do you see? The soil is covered either with growing plants or with mulch or uh, you know, um, dead matter on the ground is protecting the soil. In nature, you never see bare soil unless there's been like a major storm and there's erosion or a landslide or a tsunami. Some major, major catastrophic event can strip the soil. And you'll notice that when that happens, immediately uh, certain species of plants will come back first and they'll start to inhabit the soil. So for example, let's have a look at this. Here you see a thicker grass in here, right? This is more like a lawn and you can tell that this has been established for quite some time. And uh, I can mow it off and in a couple of weeks it'll grow back up to, you know, 18 inches, 24 inches tall very quickly. This over here is, in fact, this whole section from about the end of the uh, corn plots there, right on over to the fence line. This was all overgrown with uh, multiflora rose, like those beautiful guys that are blooming now, and uh, trees and vines and that sort of stuff. And I've cleared it all out. You can see the burn pile where I pushed everything down and burned it down. And uh, I want you to have a look at this soil. Look how little cover is on this soil. And you can actually even see where erosion is taking place, where some of this soil is being washed off. <clears throat> That's something you don't want on your farm. When you're washing off soil, you're washing off the best part of the soil because that's what's on top. You're washing off nutrients and uh, you're doing damage. Uh, but you can see this is starting to recover itself, but you'll notice that the species changes here. And I'm actually very lucky because there was a lot of white clover in, uh, in the grasses around the edge of this. And so when I mowed it, after I let it grow up and the white clover go to seed, I mowed it so that it would spray the white clover seed in. And you can see the clover has taken over and created a nice thick mat. This is the sort of protection that you want to see in your soil. And in fact, this growing plants, almost any kind of growing plant, is much better protection for your soil 
even than mulch because growing plants, especially clovers, clovers are nitrogen fixers among many other plants. Um, they're actually collecting that sunlight energy and you gotta remember these are all little solar panels so they're collecting that sunlight energy, they're producing sugars, and they're ex exuding exudates into the soil, uh, root sugars and plant compounds, and they're feeding the bacteria in the soil. And that bacteria takes that and turns it into uh, plant food, basically, and feeds the plants back. But at the end of the day, you're capturing sunlight and sequestering it in the form of carbon. And anytime you add carbon to the soil, you're increasing its ability to hold water and you're increasing its ability to support plant life. So ultimately, that's what we like to see. But there are times when we don't want a lot of plants growing up around another kind of plant who's very sensitive to weeds, like garlic or onions, for example. They don't want competition. Um, <clears throat> I think I read once that for every, every week of Every week of weed competition around, say, onions, I think it was a 2 or 3% loss of yield by the end of the growing season. So in the event where you have something like that, you can do crazy things that I do, like till, and not necessarily do that much damage, because immediately after you plant it, you come in and cover it with a heavy mulch. When you cover it with a heavy mulch, you're protecting the soil, you're protecting the microbes. And you can see when you look down into this mulch, there was a straw mat here, and that straw mat is almost completely decayed already. There's a little bit left, but it's pretty much gone. And you can also see all these little worm castings here. See all these little balls where the worms have come up through? And you see the worms. There's a worm. There's another worm. They're all through here. They're working the soil. Now worms have Basically, worms are kind of like a cross between a chicken and a cow, biologically. Um, the way they grind things up and the bacterial profiles that they leave are fantastic. And they also drill holes down in the soil, which allows water to get down in, allows exchange of air, and that hole that they drill leaves behind all of their bacteria. So plants can find that hole and chase that wormhole right down with their root and have both nutrition and bacteria and an easy place for their root to go through. Um, so worms are fantastic. Um, so, uh, for example, potatoes. Uh, last year I did potatoes. I did not mulch them because I could not find a good mulch source. I didn't have the uh, uh, machinery set up that I do this year as far as a way to collect mulch. But now I do. And I just want to point out um, that this mulch acts as an armor for the soil. That's what mulch is. It's a protective layer. Uh, and not only is it a protective layer, but it also feeds the soil. Because as it decays, as the stuff decays, it composts and becomes food for the microbes, which ultimately is food for the plants. And so, this is what we'd like to see. And if I, I wish I had I wish I had an area I could dedicate and leave uncovered to show you the massive difference between the two, but uh, I really want to knock it out of the park this year, so I'm not going to waste any space. I do want to point out that a lot of these potatoes are starting to come up now, and uh, even over the ones where I've heavily mulched, you can see the potatoes are coming through the mulch, so the soil is protected. Um, anyway, that's a basic about it, and uh, I just want to say that uh, my plan next year is to start heavily cover cropping like in the fall after i harvest these potatoes i will seed down a heavy cover crop on this and i will try to grow enough mass of plants and plant matter and organic matter that i can come in here in the spring and just roll it down and that'll be my cover and then i won't have to import mulch from other parts of the farm because ultimately even though this is a fantastic mulch, it's a fantastic soil builder, it brings in the worms, it brings in indigenous microorganisms of every variety and type from the forest floor, ultimately it is a destructive process. And um, we're going to go and take a look at where I'm pulling this mulch from, and uh, I'll explain to you a little bit more about soil, and uh, I'll demonstrate what an incredibly destructive process this is, even though it's a fairly organic 
system and even though uh, I don't plan to harvest mulch like this over and over this is a one-time harvest and then I'll let it grow back anyway I'll take you down and show you where I'm harvesting this mulch from and we'll talk about soil okay so here we are down in the forest um, this is a mostly maple stand uh, sugar maple stand hard maple that we uh, quite often uh, tap maple syrup from and, uh, and we make uh, tap maple sap from and make maple syrup with um, however this forest has been left to overgrow for quite a number of years uh, it gets some decently dappled sunlight down through some of these openings and you can see there's quite a bit of growth in here a wide variety of species uh, we got multiflora rose we got poison ivy we got kudzu vine we got ferns we got barberry and those are just a few species there's probably literally I would guess 500 to 1,000 species per square meter in here. Um, but, so this is where I'm harvesting the mulch from for the potatoes and for the other crops this year. Um, I finally have a, a thatch rake that a friend of mine hooked me up with and it's an excellent way to scoop this stuff up. So what I do is I come in here with the John Deere and I brush hog and I mow off all this stuff and then I come through with the rake and I pick up all the mowed off chopped up plants as well as the leaf mix that's on the floor and that gives me a fantastic mix of indigenous microorganisms black humic soil a little bit of it mixed in with it we don't scrape up much of that don't want to either want to leave a lot of that intact and um, and ramio wood chips ramio wood chips are come from uh, trees and bushes and branches that are inches in diameter or less and they have a much higher sugar and nutrient uh, content um, than like larger big trees if you chip them down they wouldn't give you the same profile of nutrient um, this here is actually a catalpa tree growing here um, so that's kind of the basics about it um, but I want to point out the couple different stages here's an area that I've stripped completely clean and you can see I've come through with the rake I've raked it all up I have scooped it out and a lot of that is up on the potatoes I'll we'll just take you over here and uh, I'll show you a section right after it's been mowed before it's been raked and you can see the the difference and the amount of mulch that's here uh, this is a really easy way to collect a lot of mulch quickly um, I don't have a lot a big budget for my farm so I can't go out and buy you know big truckloads of hay for mulch I just it's too cost prohibitive prohibitive for me um, so what I do is I come in and uh, I clear out all sticks and rocks that I can find and I come through here with the mower real low RPM acts like a brush hog I mow this stuff off and then I come back through with the uh, with the thatch rake and I rake it all up and then I dump it all in one pile in one spot and I come back with the dump cart and I take it up and I use it for mulch so this is what we end up with big piles of this stuff like you saw up top and you can see there's a mix of green and brown both in there and um, as well as the chipped up uh, barberry bushes, rose bushes, all that kind of stuff. And uh, so as you can see, um, it's an incredibly destructive process to the understory of the forest. And uh, so I'll only do this one year. Um, if I were doing this on a regular basis as a way of getting mulch every year, I would harvest an area and I probably wouldn't touch it again for another five years before I harvested it again because uh, I don't think it's going to hurt the, uh, the forest too much for one season to suck out a bunch of stuff. But if I were to keep doing that, I'd be depleting all of the nutrition that the forest is feeding itself with from the leaves. And uh, we don't want to deplete the forest of that. Anyway, uh, that's the basics about it. Um, it's pretty straightforward and simple, I guess, when you piece it all together. Um, just a lot of people don't understand soil and how soil works. Um, so uh, I'll just show you real quick. This is the thatch rake my friend Dave hooked me up with. This is an excellent, excellent tool to have. So it's basically just a sweeper. And you can see all the vines. I, every so often I got to go through and clip these vines out because uh, in here you pick a lot of that stuff up. But uh, I just go through with the sweeper, this whole thing fills up, 
when it fills up, it's got a tilt dump, so I can dump it right from the machine. Sorry, not the camera. Like so, boom, it dumps out, and I move on. So uh, it's, a, it's a pretty efficient way for me to get mulch right now. All right, one more thing. Um, we're gonna go take a little closer look at the soil. I wanna talk about the different parts of, uh, parts of the growing part of the soil, shall we say. We're not gonna get deep into subsoils or geology right now, but I do wanna show you a, a sample of the soil and explain the different uh, basic components of soil. So uh, hang on. Okay, we're in the same forest area here and I've just taken a piece of the soil and dug into it so I can show you the different parts of the soil. So in the soil we have five major spheres, okay? The top part where all this decaying is happening and there's all that dark matter on top and there's all that black stuff and all this forest material is rotting down into it. That's called the detritosphere. Okay, and then below that, we have the porosphere. That's where you see all these little balls, little tiny balls of soil. It's kind of the transition between the, dist the detritosphere and the uh, agrosphere, which is the lower section, which is, the, it's basically, it's like the porosphere, but the balls are a little bit bigger. This isn't the greatest example in this spot here, but you'll get the idea. Okay, so we have detritosphere, porosphere, agrosphere, then we have the rhizosphere, which is basically where the roots meet the soil, and there's a lot of interesting biology that goes on there with bacteria and fungus, and actually some micro, micro, mycorrhizal fungi actually inhabit the root itself, and they are actually their fungal components actually go into part of the root and they actually exchange nutrition with the roots um, among many other things. Okay, so detritosphere, agrosphere, porosphere, then where the worms come through is called the drillosphere. Okay, and I don't see any worms in this particular soil but I did dig it up and make, make some mess, I probably scared them off. And then, uh, and then the rhizosphere. So there's five components here. Detritosphere, porosphere, agrosphere, drillosphere for worms, and rhizosphere for roots. So, uh, just to understand those basic components will help you get a better idea. And uh, truly healthy soils should have a porosphere and agrosphere that goes down quite a ways. Um, this is a very clay soil, it's a very hard soil. I think you can see that here from my shovel divot where I came through. and. Uh, and so it's a fairly tight soil and it's not all that deep. But you'd be amazed what uh, roots can do when they decide they want to get down in there and get nutrition from the soil. Anyway, uh, I just thought this would be a good uh, basic discussion of soil. And uh, so the, the key points to take away from this are you always want your soil to be covered. Uh, whether you're covering it with mulch or whether you're covering it with growing plants, mulch is fantastic because it protects it and it provides nutrition and a, and a place for the biology to be protected from the sun. Um, but better than mulch is growing plants because anytime you have growing plants, you're sequestering carbon into the soil and you're building up that humic matter. All this black stuff you see on top in the detritosphere is because all this stuff made from sunlight is rotting down and leaving carbon behind and that's why it's turning black. The more carbon content you have in the soil, the darker it will become. And that's what you want. The higher the carbon mat the higher the carbon content, the more life your soil will have and the more nutrition it will provide and the faster you can grow better plants in it. Um, so I hope this helps someone and uh, thanks for watching the pharmacy. Well as I was on the farm, uh, I found something else I wanted to talk talk to you about. Remember I said uh, growing crops sequester carbon and protect soil? Um, so this is my first year putting down cover crops. Uh, I've been looking and studying, looking at the idea and studying it for, for quite a while now. Um, but this year I really finally got heavily motivated to turn, 
turn some cover crops on and I'm going to start working on multi-species varieties and really building my soil with this this tactic and I'm going to uh, I'm going to join that up with uh, foliar feeds which can vastly improve the, eff the efficiency of plants sequestering carbon and producing energy from sunlight um, but I just want to point out that this is buckwheat it was planted uh, I think about a week and a half ago, if I remember correctly, I think it was planted around the same time that that sweet corn was earlier in the video. Um, and you can see it's up, code leaden leaves are out, and it's actually starting to get ready to open up the second leaf set. Um, and in fact, some of them actually are putting on a second leaf already. Anyway, uh, this is going to be blue corn and pumpkins. I might mix two different corn varieties in here, I'm not sure on that yet. But I realized this spring that I had uh, I had time before blue corn was going to go in and that I could squeeze off, uh, you know, about 30 days of running a cover crop in place first. And buckwheat is an excellent one for that because it makes an excellent green manure if you uh, uh, either roll it on top or uh, mow it in or till it in uh, at the end of about a 30 day cycle. Uh, this will grow, uh, I think, around two foot tall and, uh, and be a nice green manure and it'll provide nutrition and it will have already gotten the biology accelerated in here. Uh, along with this planting, I did put down uh, some forage foliar feed from Advancing Eco Agriculture, an appropriate amount for the square footage here, which I believe is around 1,800 square feet, if I remember correctly. Um, and I also put down some Spectrum Extra uh, with that till and foliar and drench because I wanted to make sure that we had all the biology present, all the nutrition present, and then put good seeding with it. And uh, I will probably give these a foliar feed uh, in the next couple days, probably, probably more toward the end of the week because we have a lot of rain right now. And I really want that foliar to have a chance to soak into the leaves and really accelerate this crop. Um, We'll come back and uh, I'll show you this stuff before it gets mowed under and before it gets planted into blue corn. And uh, I think you'll be amazed how fast it grows. Anyway, uh, that's another example of keeping your soils covered with something growing or some kind of mulch. Uh, 